Okay, some of you guys asked me for a video of doing the test. Uh, the test is up here on the computer. Uh, I'm just going to be writing on the paper. I'm not going to work all the problems. Uh, I'll just tell you about something. Number one, uh, F is equal to negative KX. So the shark, you have to do 49 times 9.8 to find its force. So that's how that one works, and you're solving for X. The K is 1,500. Uh, number three is uh, how much kinetic energy was gained if it started at zero. So the first thing you do is you do work makes you mad. All right. So work makes you mad, and that's also equal to kinetic energy, right, because they're all joules. So it will be 60 kilograms accelerating at 4.4 meters per second per second for a distance of 3.3 meters. So you be like, okay, no problem. 60 mass times acceleration, 0.4, times distance, 3.3, .3, equals 79.2 joules. Well, that's how much work you did. Well, guess what? That's also how much kinetic energy you would have. Number four says, what is the final velocity? All right. So now we're going to use the kinetic energy formula. One-half mv squared, 79.2 joules is the kinetic energy. One-half m, the mass of this thing is 60. So one-half of 60 is 30. So 30 times v squared equals 79.2. <coughs> so the square root of 79.2 divided by 30. So 79.2 divided by 30 equals the square root. 1.6 meters per second is the final velocity you would get out of that problem. It's just like the spring when we shot the, uh, when we shot the marble today. That's the same problem. Okay, number eight says... Um, Number eight is about a shelf, all right? And it says somebody puts a six kilogram bowling ball on a 2.5 meter shelf. So here it is, six kilograms. And the height of the shelf is 2.5 meters. So it says how much potential energy is stored? Potential energy due to gravity is equal to mass times gravity times height. Too easy. 6 times 9.8 times 2.5. 147 joules are stored up there. How much potential energy is stored? How much work did you do? Same thing. You had to do the work to get it up there to store the energy. Uh, what's the maximum speed the ball in number 8 would have before it hit the ground? There's a bunch of ways to solve that, but you just say 147 equals one half m v squared. 147 divided by three square root, divided by three equals square root, seven meters per second. So if you also solved how fast would something hit the ground if it fell from a height of 2.5 meters, you should get the same answer. If you don't, something's wrong. All right, number 10. A ball to accelerate 1.3 distance 7. All right, first of all, this one is work is equal to force times distance, or really, work makes you mad, okay? So first thing is you have a... 2 kilogram mass at 1.3 meters per second per second for 7 meters. So we're going to see how much work was done there. 2, two times 1.3 times 7 equals 18.2 joules of work. But the question says if it's done in 3 seconds, how much power was applied? Power equals work divided by time. Power is equal to 18.2 joules 
of work done in three seconds. Divided by three, 6.1, 6.07, 6.1, 6.1 uh, watts. Just put a capital W there. All right. Number 11, calculate the spring constant of that slinky. All right. No problem. F equal negative KX. Right. So let's see. Force. It's a 70 gram or point. 0 0.07 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second. That is the force down that the weight's pulling down on it. So 0 0.07 times 9.8 equals 0 0.686 newtons is how much is how much the uh, thing weighs. And it is stretched 0.86 meters. That is the distance it stretched. So man, it stretched a long way. This must be like a slinky. 0. 0.686 divided by 0. 0.86 gives me 0. 0.797 or 0. 0.798 rounded off newtons per meter. That would be a really easy spring to pull. Number 12. Uh, number 12, a 3,000 watt motor pulls a box five meters across the ice in six seconds. So 3,000 watts power is equal to work divided by time. 3,000 watts is equal to work, and it did it in six seconds. So 6 times 3,000 means it did 18,000 joules of work. That's how much work it did. If a 3,000-watt motor works for 6 seconds, because power is equal to work divided by time, it'll do 18,000 joules of work if it's going wide open. What force was applied to the box? So now we know work is equal to force times distance. 18,000 joules were applied to a box and it was moved for a distance of five meters. So how hard did it push on the box? 18,000 divided by five. Thirty-six hundred newtons. That's how hard it pushed on it. I don't think that you guys have done one like that before. Uh, I didn't do one like that today, so I might let you off the hook on that one. Although I do think it's it's not a hard problem. I might let you off the hook on that. Number 15 is basically just like that. I'll do it. I'll finish it off. We're running out of time here. A box is lifted 14 meters. All right. How much force? All right, this is a good one. Work equals force times distance. All right? 2,240 joules of work were done on a box that was lifted for 14 meters. How much force was applied? 2,240 divided by 14. That's our first step. 2,240 divided by 14. 160 newtons was the force applied to the box, or how much the box weighed. How much force was exerted on the box? That. What was the mass of the box? Okay, no problem. 160 newtons is the force. What was the force is equal to mass times acceleration. The acceleration on Earth is 9.8. 160 divided by 9.8. 16.3. 16.3 kilograms. Now look, this problem is, you know very well, we usually have kilograms and we multiply it by 9.8 to get newtons. This one we're just dividing by 9.8 to get mass. Good luck, peeps.